Hi everybody, today we're going to make some experiment because this guy is now very famous in Russia via internet but all interview that he did, he did it in Russian. Correct. Yeah, yeah correct. But uh, how many years have you spent in the USA? About 25. 25 years. Just a little less than that, maybe well, 24. Well, it's, it's, it's half a life, actually. It's more than half a life. <laughs> more than half a life. Okay. Um, well, what is your name? Michael. Uh, Michael. Well, Michael Mikhail in Russian. Yeah, Michael. Well, uh, what did you do um, over there? I worked as a police officer in California, city of Auckland, mm -hmm. from uh, 1999, uh, February, uh, April to December of 2015. Yeah, and uh, well, how did you come to the USA from Russia? Oh, my family immigrated in 1992 mm -hmm. uh, as immigrants, just left everything and went there mm -hmm. with nothing. With nothing. And uh, was it difficult for you to adapt some rules in the USA especially when you became a policeman? Uh, well, of course, when you enter a new country, uh, you have to realize there are new laws, new way of life, uh, customs, uh, everything is different. I mean, language is number one. Uh, if you don't know language, it's going to be very hard on you. Uh, luckily, I went to a school where I started learning English from a second grade, from age eight, mm -hmm. and it was pretty specialized, pretty, you know, hard school to go to because I hated the English. I was like, why would I ever need to, you know, English in my life? Uh, we had no idea. We weren't going anywhere. That was back in, what, 1980. Mm -hmm. Everything was great. And uh, uh, so then eventually uh, I finished eight uh, years and I went to the, uh, like, uh, college for three years or it's called uh, labor, uh, labor college or uh, uh, professional, yes, correct. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I, fi I graduated that, but of course, in three years there, be, you know, after I finished eight years in special school, the teacher in that college told me, like after I think first or second lesson, like don't ever come, because you're just having too much fun at other students at their expense, because they came from all over the place, they didn't know English that well, and of course, being a young idiot, I was just making fun of everybody. And she told me, okay, here's your 5A and just don't ever come back. So that was extra hour, two hours of sleep for me. And that was great. So I kind of, kind of lost or forgot a lot of things I learned in school. So then I went to uh, the university uh, for two years. And uh, for some reason, uh, our dean decided that everybody needs to learn French. <laughs> so there you go. So now from the first year in the university, I'm learning French. Uh, of course, I didn't learn much. I mean, I actually did okay. I always had A's, but uh, or fives. I am so used to the American system. We got A or whatever. Uh, so, whatever. Uh, so yeah, I had A, but uh, of course, I didn't learn much, and I forgot even more of English. <laughs> and uh, in '92, in the spring of '92, when everything was pretty much decided that we are going, it's just a matter of when. We didn't know exactly when we're leaving because it was kind of a surprise note. Oh, by the way, like next week. Yeah, you guys got authorized, you can leave now. Great. So I had like half a year to pretty much refresh my English or whatever. Did I do that? No. I was partying hard. So basically I didn't And you were young. Yeah, I was 20 years old. I mean, who, why, why would I go and take some courses of English, which I hated, while I could just party and have you know, good times with my friends? So, well, of course, when I got to the Los Angeles, got to California, uh, and the first thing it was, okay, now it's a different country. Now you gotta really like kick it in. Like some somehow find find those reserves in your brain. Whatever you learned, it's gotta come back. And uh, well, thanks to the Soviet school, uh, even though I was really uh, repellent, I did not like to to learn it, to study it. I, I just I, I got what, three maybe C, C minus. I think on my final exam in eighth grade. Uh, however, it all came back eventually. And the grammar, which I was absolutely like two minus, it came back and uh, it really helped me. But also it helped that I instantly went to the evening school. Uh, they offer those classes for all immigrants or people who just want to learn and get better. It's pretty much free. I mean, I, I think it's like $2 or $3 a month. And uh, you just go there after hours. It's in the evening. 
and uh, there are teachers and basically they give you like a small test to see which level you're on and they, they start from there and you know you have a chance opportunity to learn it for free so those people who live in the states for generations that don't speak english they're just, they're just lazy because the reality is it's all over you, you can learn it and don't pay a dime and then on top of that uh, we didn't know about it, but some friends told us that there is another college. It's College of English Language. It's in downtown LA in Koreatown. Probably not the best neighborhood, but uh, basically every immigrant gets a, a grant. They get a little bit of money to study English. And it's about 2500 a year back, back then. Uh, this is 2.4 thousand. That's pretty good. And that college accepts that grant, and you go there a full day. You go from like 9 in the morning to about 1400 or whatever so you get like two or three double lessons and it's all English and you get a school bus takes you there and takes you home so it's like it's like you go to school you know to high school but it's actually college so you just you know fill all the paperwork uh, they send uh, the request to the department of uh, whatever finance I don't know where they send it to mm -hmm. I really I don't remember it's been so long mm -hmm. and uh, you say yeah can come to class so you basically you walk you know wake up in the morning get your breakfast uh, get on the corner, they tell you where the bus goes because it's a, it's a set route. Uh, jump on the bus, it takes you to college, and all good. And you're there all day studying English for free. Because it doesn't cost you nothing, government pays for you. So that, that was a big also step. But also just uh, you know, talking to people, you know, finding a job, looking through newspaper ads, reading, listening to the television, radio. See, there are lots of immigrants who, who come to the States or other countries. Um, they try to stick together, like have, live in their little communities, whatever, where you get newspapers or in Russian or whatever language they're in, they get, uh, you know, the stores, the storefronts, and, and you don't need the English in LA, to tell I, the I, truth. I, I, I met a woman uh, in uh, New York. Uh, she, I, d I don't remember exactly what was that. Well, Jews, I think. Jews, yeah, fr fresh fresh juice and he didn't she didn't know numbers digits in english well uh, oops. yeah oops yeah, yeah for, for me it was oops but but that's like the but, first thing you learn in school pretty much after alphabet <laughs> yeah but uh well she, she was uh, from late in america so okay uh and then you decided to become a policeman yeah, it took me a while because I was looking at other things. Mm -hmm. I worked in different places, traveled through the state. And uh, yeah, one time I just decided that, you know, it's a good job. Mm -hmm. It pays, you know, decent money. Of course, not like IT tech or, mm -hmm. uh, or a doctor or whatnot. But uh, I didn't have that opportunity to go to college and study full time. Because mm -hmm. A, it costs lots of money. B, you know, who's going to support my family? Because when I came, I, I had my mom and my dad who didn't speak language pretty much. And I had to take care of them, so I had to work and pretty much pay all the bills. Uh, so yeah, that took a while to kind of get a little bit on my, you know, on my feet, and start making decisions like, okay, what, what, what do I want to do? Okay, now they, my dad found a job, my mom found a job, so they were good, set. They lived in Los Angeles. I did not like Los Angeles. Why? I hate that city. Cause it's like Babylon. It's like uh, Babylon. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've been to New York and... Uh, it's even well, worse. <laughs> no, no, th then, then, Boston, Philly, uh, Miami, and, uh, well, we're not in the USA, so we can speak uh, openly about mm -hmm. that. And New York was the only city when I met beautiful girls. And I thought that another city is LA, well, because of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Is it true? California. That, that no, no, no. There are beautiful women everywhere. It's, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's a little funny because in California, you know, it borders Mexico. When you go down south, uh, you know, there, you, you have more like dark-skinned girls, you know, more Hispanic looking. And if you go north, uh, you get more, you know, blonde, blonde and uh, whatever. But no, they everywhere. I, I can't tell. Yeah. Well, of course, New York's. Uh, I mean, you probably didn't go to Brooklyn or Bronx, correct? You were in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to see really ugly girls, that's where you go. But of course, on Manhattan, on Fifth Avenue, or you know, Madison Square Garden, you're going to see all the you know rich or semi you know rich people who can you know spend money to take care of themselves and look a certain way. And if you go to the poorer places, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there are less beauty there. As a matter of fact, uh, I forgot who said it, but one of the 
writers I uh, read the books back in the days uh, just rolled straight up that you know the poverty has very little beauty in it. So pretty much uh, in Auckland, you if you go East Auckland, you're not going to find any pretty girls there. I mean, uh, they're just not there because there's a certain you know lifestyle, certain way they live, certain way the way they dress and eat that they're just not beautiful. If you go you know 50 miles east to the you know working the more uh, rich community, not rich but more um, uh, wealthy community, you, you're gonna see more pretty girls. I mean, this is just that's how I look at it. That's how I see it. Okay, what were things that uh, astonished you in the USA that you didn't expect? Well, while you was initially from when Russia, even from USSR, the, yeah. the USSR. Yeah? I got your question. Yes. Uh, well, I wasn't from Moscow. So, I mean, I've been to Moscow many times and St. Petersburg, or well, back to Leningrad, I traveled a lot. But uh, uh, the first thing, after we arrived to the airport in LA, uh, were the speed uh, roads, the freeways, the highways. The system of highways was amazing because I, I only seen it in the movies. Uh, and the first time I experienced it, when we got off the plane, our relatives got us in the car and we started driving towards Santa Monica, uh, the little city like on the west LA where they lived and yeah we got on this freeway it's like wow that's crazy the speed first of all uh, you know 65 miles an hour it's a good speed and everybody you know drive very fast and then uh the climate i mean i got there on the 5th of october i believe it was columbus day or after that but it was 5th of october we were leaving moscow two days ago it was pretty much snowing i mean there, there was snow falling down and i got to la and it's like 35 degrees it's hot and warm. My friend Please. who lives in Boston, he said me that, uh, Paul, only here I realize what summer is. <laughs> Where, in Boston? <laughs> in Boston, because uh, he, he, he's from Leningrad, from okay. St. Petersburg. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, here's our summer. Well, he should move to Chicago <laughs> and see how summer isn't or how winter really is. Because I've been to Chicago, I've been to Montreal. And winter in Montreal is much worse than in, you know, St. Petersburg, because it's crazy. It could be only like minus 10 uh, centigrade or Celsius, but you can't get outside your, you know, hotel because the wind is so crazy. It will move you down the street. You can't go up the street because it moves you backwards. And, yeah, and uh, also the wind chill factor, uh, the humidity is very high. So the cold feels much colder than it is. Of course, in St. Petersburg, the humidity is very high too because you get all the rains. The Baltic Sea nearby, so that's why the cold here is also feels colder yeah. than, than usual. Okay, climate, speedways, then? Then we had to go to the federal building to apply for the certain documents. And uh, I don't know, it's just uh, the size of all of it. it it's such a huge, it was a huge building. Everything is clean. There's no trash. Even though that was Los Angeles, the year of the riots, pretty much. But we went to the federal building on the west side of the city, so it was not, you know, there's nothing, no riots happened there. They didn't, they didn't get to there. But of course, on the east side of the city, half the city was, you know, in ashes. That was a big contrast, basically, between the, also the neighborhoods. Uh, some neighborhoods look, you know, very beautiful, and some neighborhoods look like trash, like it's a war zone. So that was kind of weird to see. Uh, even though even in Samara, there are, or Kubishev back then, uh, certain parts of the city are worse than others, obviously, the outskirts. Uh, what's funny thing about America, it's usually the downtown area is very nice and huge. Right around downtown, there are ghettos, like inner city. And then on the outskirts, you get a beautiful, you know, neighborhoods, nice seat, nice uh, houses. And that's where people drive to work <laughs> to the, <laughs> through this inner city to get to the downtown, to, to the business center. So that, that's just different. But that's how, that, that was, you know, kind of surprising too. Because I was like, wow, the center of the city and why are there slums here? So that was kind of, you know, weird. But the way uh, the area where a convention center in Los Angeles used to be uh, was horrible. There's also the big bus station. I took the bus from other, city, other cities, you know, back to LA. And uh, here's a convention center where, you know, celebrities come, you know, politicians, you know, uh, business meetings. And right around this uh, convention center, there are motels, you know, hourly motels, prostitutes everywhere, you know, drug users just pretty much laying on the pavement. Uh, now it's all changed. They cleaned the whole thing up. Now the Staples Center, where uh, LA Kings and uh, LA, uh, 
Lakers, the basketball. Yeah, I'm not a basketball fan, so it took me a second. But yeah, that's what they play. And the whole, pretty much, I don't know, 20 square blocks now, it's like a different city. It's completely cleaned out, it's beautiful restaurants, nice walkways. It's, it looks 21st century and it used to look like slums. So it's a big difference. But back then in 92, it looked horrible. The rats like this big running around. <laughs> I kid you not, I got off the bus. My dad was on his way. Of course he lost, you know, he was, he did not know the city well because LA is huge. And we lived like very far from downtown. And uh, so he got lost on the way a little bit. So I had to wait for him for an extra 20 minutes. I did not like those 20 minutes because I did not feel safe, like at all. And that was broad daylight. I couldn't even imagine what happens there at night at that time. So, but it changed in some, you know, in some ways, uh, it's gotten better. Um, so, out of the ocean, the first time I saw ocean in my life. I mean, I've been to the Black Sea and the uh, Baltic Sea, but ocean is different. You just feel it, that, that, that power, that, the life on it. So the very first day when I got to the States, the first thing I did, since our relatives lived nearby to the, to the beach in Santa Monica, I just went there. Uh, without knowing the city, streets, or anything, I just remember my ways and got to the beach, got to the sand, walked to the water, touched it, it's like, okay, cool. I touched the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what were uh, situations in your police practicing that you like to talk about with your friends afterwards well when you drink some alcohol <laughs> and some we don't drink <laughs> you know what's funny but because uh, the work was so you know different from the everyday work that uh, when we went to the bar or you had some kind of party i have to ask you yeah. about that question well all the time when i see uh, a policeman in Hollywood movie, some Hollywood movie, he eat hot dogs, he uh, drink coffee, and uh, every director stresses that feature that policemen uh, uh, eat very poorly during his uh, work time. Unfortunately, that's true, but that's not by choice. Like if you leave, if you work in Auckland, if you work in East Auckland, and especially like a second or third watch. Uh, second is a swing shift mm -hmm. from 1500 to uh, uh, 03, I guess, in the morning. Uh, and, and especially the night shift, there's no place to eat. Mm -hmm. The only place you can go is the gas stations, the ones that are open, because most of them are closed, because they don't like to be open, they don't like to be robbed. Uh, and maybe a couple of restaurants, but uh, that's what you get. And most of the time you don't have time to even sit down and eat normal meal, even if they offer it, even if they offer it, just because uh, at any second the radio can cancel your dinner or breakfast or lunch and send you somewhere. So you grab whatever you can. Uh, during the day shift, it's a little better. Uh, obviously, when I you know, work day shift, I could always, almost, al almost always find a place to go and eat like salad or soup or whatever, or all of it. Uh, but I believe there, were only, uh, there was only one place in East Oakland which offered like normal meal, and that was Hilton next to the airport. So yeah, in, in that part of the town, there are no other restaurants. Just period. I mean, you have taco trucks, you know, it's a little mm -hmm. v wagons with the wheels, yeah, yeah. and Mexicans or you know some you know Latinos they they make you know tacos there. Uh, you know, you get meat, cockroaches, and everything else goes right in there. So I've been inside those trucks as a because I used to work as a CSI crimes investigator, and uh, there were murders there, you know, robberies, everything. So I would get in the back and look at this kitchen. I was like, I'm never eating here ever again because before you know sometimes you just you hungry, you grab whatever, and they're like, no, no, ne never again, no. This way. is a case with uh, uh, not only tacos, uh, some restaurants are, you know. <laughs> yeah, some restaurants also in the back, like there, there was a restaurant, well, it's, it still is. Uh, I think it's like one block from our police building downtown. Uh, the dude who owned it uh, used to play uh, in the casino. There's a casino next city over in Emeryville. Uh, I guess he played there against some Asian mafia, triads, whatever, he lost lots of money. Uh, they came to get money from him. He said, you know, I'll, I'll pay you, I'll pay you. They left, he goes in the back and hangs himself. Mm. In the rest, I mean, basically in the back of a restaurant with all the food stored. And, uh, you know, after, you know, the body got, got taken down and all the procedures were done, guess what, they were serving the same, you know, same products from that same storage, <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to the restaurant, it's like, that's crazy. 
So that, that's why I it's mean, all about money. But also stereotyping <laughs> is a big deal. I mean, there, there are uh, fat, you know, cops who are out of the shape, and most of those don't work in the you know fast cities like you know like us, Oakland. We we had some big guys, but by no means they couldn't do their job. Uh, but some departments uh, they don't you know where nothing happens, they just get bored. Like literally, you could sit in the car all day for like eight, ten hours, and nothing's happening in your city. You could be reading newspaper, drinking coffee, and yeah, there you go. Like I wish I would work like that, but I didn't <laughs> because you know it was very different. We went to call from call, you know, to, from call to call to call without having time to even finish paperwork sometimes. Uh, How would you describe um, the line of your work in terms, you know? Um, I don't know how to put it properly in English, uh, direction maybe, well, uh, crimes. Uh, they were murders, uh, robberies, uh, which, cr uh, which part of that crimes uh, were, you know, uh, bigger than other and so on? In, ter in terms of numbers, in terms of uh, well, your involvement, maybe. When you, know, when you patrol officer, you pretty much answer to every call you beat. Mm -hmm. um, whatever happens, you go and take the either report or you catch the guy or you know, try to stop the fight or well, stop the fight, catch the guy at the same time sometimes or vice versa. But uh, uh, as a crime scene investigator, as a criminalist, uh, as an expert, I'd go in and process the crime scenes. So I didn't deal with people, I only dealt with like bodies, mm -hmm. you know, physical evidence, uh, you know, blood spatter, you know, casings, bullet holes, uh, weapons, whatever happened. So yeah, I had the, I was uh, the main investigator, I don't want to lie, I don't want to brag, but I think about 45 to 50 murders mm -hmm. as, a, as a primary you know, the investigator on that scene, primary crime scene investigator, because we have both crime, you know, the crime scene investigator and the regular investigator. The regular investigator deals with people, mm -hmm. like he is the one who interrogates people, you know, tries to look for suspects. I only deal with physical evidence, with the scene itself. So, and that's, it all combines and it goes to the D8 for charging, whatever. But basically all crimes, murders, rapes, uh, robberies all day, uh, burglaries, you know, the break-ins, uh, stolen cars, uh, you name it, arsons, we, I investigate everything. And too many. <laughs> were there some things like from the movie when you, uh, you know, were running, there were shooting? Lots, there were lots of nasty scenes, yeah. um, you name it. But like, like every time you say, oh, now I've seen it all, something else happens which you have not seen and wish you didn't see because it really messes up your sleep sometimes, or you, you start thinking about it. So coming back to your question about, you know, what you guys talk about while you're drinking, usually not about work. It's because you already spend the whole, like, 10 hour because shift. Because it's ugly Yeah, sometimes. and you work together. Uh, well, sometimes you discuss certain details, whatever, you know, especially if it was funny, something funny happens, because amazingly enough, lots of funny things happen during the, you know, during the shift. But usually if something big happens, you just, you know, drink and talk about sports, Girls, movies, whatever. Uh, play pool, uh, billiards, whatever. But mm, most of the time you don't talk about work. Did, did you go to shrink? To no. no. Why would no. I? No, because... Uh, I'm hopeless. I mean, it's very <laughs> sad, so forget it. Nothing gonna save you. <laughs> Actually, you went to shrink once. Correct, yes. I forgot. Uh, it was in 2001. Or 2001. Uh, 20, yes. Uh, my friend... I was involved in a very critical situation, uh, critical incident, and uh, he was sent like directly to uh, the shrink or psychiatrist. Uh, he actually needed it, yes, it was a good thing that he went. But since I was guarding him, I was pretty much with him 24-7. I had his gun, he wasn't allowed to carry a gun at the time because it was a very bad situation. Uh, he was working, he was on, on leave. Uh, but basically, because I went with him, they said, oh, yeah, by the way, and you, you go too, just in case. I'm like, case of what? Mm -hmm. I'm, I said, I'm hopeless. You're not going to fix me. No, but I went, you know, you know, a doctor asked me a couple of questions. I mean, do you feel, you know, this? Do you feel depressed? I'm like, no. Do you feel like you need to hurt somebody? Like, always. Uh, no, just kidding. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it was not nothing. So it didn't, doesn't go anywhere in your record or whatnot, unless you do something crazy, and then they, they'll force you to. 
but uh, basically people who get involved in those critical incidents sometimes, uh, they do experience you know, psychological problems and they, they lose sleep, appetite or other way around, just start eating, drinking too much uh, or even using drugs, narcotics. Uh, so that's like a measure to prevent that mostly. And sometimes, you know, the officer can get orders to go. I mean, you must go, otherwise we won't let you back on duty unless you get cleared by the doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's normal procedure because they don't want people go berserk. You know, armed people, they already got, you know, guns and all the training and now they're going to start shooting somebody. So that's kind of, that's what's the Well, deal. it's kind of a control. Correct. Uh, okay. Uh, that's mostly safety than control. Everybody's uh, safe. Let's switch the theme of our conversation. Let's well, try. okay, uh, then there was a time when you uh, finished your job mm -hmm. as a policeman and uh, you had a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay in the USA or ca uh, come back to Russia. Correct. Yeah, and... Uh, there wasn't actually, I didn't have a, it's not like I didn't have a choice, no. <laughs> But uh, that question didn't, never came up. I didn't, like, didn't think about going back for a long time. I just felt like, you know, I'm going to retire, live my retired life, whatever. But uh, I went back to Russia in uh, 2015 just to visit, to visit friends and relatives. And uh, I kind of decided I want to move back. Just, I got tired of California, got tired of certain things. I want to change, change the scenery changed my life, which I did, and uh, I don't regret it right now. I only miss my son, because he still lives there, and my dog and my cat, <laughs> and everybody else, my, my fam some, some of my family too, but uh, it's just, uh, it's life. You, you choose where you feel better, where, where it's better for you. Why do you feel better here? Well, first of all, this is my country, that's where I was born. Oh yeah, I forget, I forget about that. You're Remember? Russian, actually. That's true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had, uh, especially the first couple of years in the States, I had crazy, uh, like, uh, nostalgia. Basically, mm -hmm. I, I was like, I wish I never left. I hope I, you know, hope to go back, whatever. <clears throat> but the uh, circumstances dictated that, you know, that's, that, that was the right way to do at that mm -hmm. time for, for the family. And there are many factors in it. So it's not just, you know, looking for a better life. There were more than that. There were, and uh, I don't want to discuss that stuff, obviously. But that, that was a choice basically my parents decided to, and they weren't going to leave me alone. So I didn't, you know, leave me alone yeah. here. So uh, even though I was 20 years old, I could say, no, I'm not going. But then they would go, and I didn't want to hold them back, so they wanted to go. Okay, let's go. Plus, it was something new and interesting, too, just like right now. Because it's been so long since I've been, uh, you know, in the country. So when I came in 2015, uh, everything is different. Well, that is uh, the case. Um, I suppose that uh, you discussed with your colleagues that, well, Russia and the USSR, and they had some opinion about that, and they had some picture in their mind about the country because they, they had seen some movies, some TV series, they read some newspapers and so on. So what were main prejudice what was main prejudice about russia oh well, it's funny because like in my department uh everybody thought that I was like crazy like that uh russian uh, spaceman <laughs> from that station from uh, armageddon <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. bruce willis yeah the armageddon <laughs> movie uh, or i was like Ivan drago but i was like dude come on i'm not even a boxer what the hell so no, it was just most people are reasonable. Uh, they don't take idiots usually to a police because you got to pass a you know, psych <laughs> test. And if you're a complete you know, you know, retard, they're probably not going to take you. So, I mean, there was those propaganda. Obviously, people still exposed to it in you know, a certain negative way. Uh, some people more, some people less. But lots of my uh, colleagues actually went to Russia, or like uh, either as tourists, uh, or uh, on some exchange programs. Like one kid in my academy uh, is a little younger than me, but he came to uh, Soviet Union, I think it was uh, 89, where he was like 16 or 17 uh, as an exchange student. And he only had like good memories. He only hated one thing is that in the whole Moscow, he couldn't find a restroom. 
like a public restroom back then. It was still that was a problem. There, there back was then. a problem that uh, yeah. we totally f f <laughs> the little things. Yeah, little things that we, we just didn't think about it. You yeah. just go before you leave the house. You go to the, you know kind of funny things. But as a tourist, you know, obviously he was going from one excursion to another exhibition, another museum all day, and he kind of was like, I don't know where the restroom is. Like he's American. You're stupid. Shut up. Yeah, Russians always find the restaurant. I'm just kidding. But, uh, and the other people just go to party. Like uh, a couple of officers and sergeants, they went to Moscow and had like, they told me, dude, that was like greatest time in our lives. Uh, and they're both black. <laughs> black guys, like, best time in our lives. I mean, what's wrong with Russia? Why, why, why the press says it's so bad there? Well, it's so great. I'm like, well, if you're a tourist with money, of course it's great. I mean, come on. But if you live on an everyday basis like, you know, other people and have to make a living, it's probably a little harder, don't you think? Like, imagine, you know, rich tourists come to California, you know, spend all the time in clubs, you know, and, uh, you know, bars and enjoying themselves, but they don't have to pay rent and all utilities. Because that thing is even more expensive, obviously, than here. Yeah, so it's funny, but no, not really. I didn't, uh, I didn't experience something like. Mm -hmm. Of course, nobody discriminated against me ever uh, in, in the department. No, I, for some reason, they actually people liked me. I don't know why, but people liked me. Uh, I, lots of people who I didn't even really know. Like, I mean, I, I kind of know, I kind of knew everybody, but it's a big department, like 800 people. It's, it's just, oh, just it's, officers. Yeah. Not even it's, counting it's, all civilians, and most people like somehow somehow knew me, or heard something about me, and sometimes not just bad things, sometimes something different. But uh, as a crime scene investigator, you know, I was kind of on my own. I, I was on patrol, but uh, I did. I, I worked. I worked alone, so I was like a lonely wolf. I liked that. What were things that amazed you when you came back to Russia first? Well, when I came to Moscow in 2015, uh, the cleanliness. The city, comparing to most American, you know, city, big cities, uh, is very clean and very green. Uh, obviously, traffic is bad, but that's every big city that's that's expected. But it has subway system, which is pretty much excellent. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of, it was great. I enjoyed every moment of it. I did not expect because last time I saw Moscow was 1994, right right with a crisis, right before the the war in uh, Chechnya started. So it was very different. It, I did not recognize the city. I mean, uh, even though they still had those little um, tents everywhere by the sub subway station. No, they hadn't. No, so, no, so, no, so, no, they got that. So they hadn't stopped it. <laughs> yeah, good thing they did because the city is supposed to look like the modern city, not like an uh, old marketplace, I think. My personal opinion. Don't like it. Uh, I Too bad. Agree with you on that. <laughs> yeah, because that just creates the dirt, uh, you know, trash, rats cockroaches and the food is probably not very healthy in those mm -hmm. but uh yeah it's it's even cleaner now mm -hmm. i mean every time you I come to moscow it's like wow they changed this to better they changed this to better it's unfortunately other cities are not as well i mean they don't grow the same way and don't well, don't because uh, don't beautify uh, them they're well. not capitals but you live in samara yeah. yes yeah and uh, what about samara uh samara i don't know got destroyed <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Samara had, uh, which was cool about Samara, about growing up there, is the whole old city, like downtown, like the center of the city, was all old buildings. The uh, problem is those were like 200, 300 year old buildings, so they started falling apart. And uh, some blocks there are fixed, like the cities, are, uh, those houses are removed, and they build something different, modern. Uh, problem is uh, complete absence of taste, or like general plan of what the city is supposed to look like. Uh, so on the same block, you could see five different uh, architectural like designs, which completely, they like contrast with each other and make it look stupid. They don't match. They don't match at all. Yeah, like not, it's, it's hard to like, seriously, it's painful sometimes to watch. I'm, I'm used to a little different, more organized, uh, especially in like a smaller cities in the States. Uh, the architecture is more like eye-pleasing than this. I mean, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to modernize, you know, build this new, you know, not skyscrapers, of course, but like tall office buildings, you know, concrete and, st and steel and the glass, but they kind of have to, you know, complement each other. What about people? Have they changed? Well, um, what about that? That controversial question. <laughs> well, uh, no. Sorry, course. sorry, Paul. Well, uh. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Uh, well, I can't get in everybody's head. You know, you can't read people's minds. But 
uh, yeah, people changed a lot. Because when I was growing up, we, we lived in a different society with different uh, you know, values, different structure. Uh, it was a different country. It changed a lot. So whether our people now look lo more like Americans or whatever, probably not. Because it will ch take you know, many, many generations to uh, change minds completely. Uh, I'm not saying it's good or bad. Uh, every, every, every society, like every country, uh, has something, well, supposed to have something good in it. And uh, the, the cultures, the, um, re not rituals, but traditions, uh, and certain things are okay. Uh, and uh, about country itself, well, how would you describe the modern Russia? I don't know. It's, I, I don't think about things like that, but uh, well, it's definitely very different from what the country I was born in and then lived like 40 years of my life. Uh, things changed, so better or worse, it's not to me to decide. But I think it's harder for people to live now than it used to be like 30 years ago, before the collapse of Soviet Union, obviously. Uh, people have to work harder. Uh, it's harder to make a living. It's harder to find jobs. The education is very different. What I don't like, certainly, is the way the, the schools work. Mm. Uh, the way the education system is destroyed. I don't care. Like People may disagree with me, but uh, back, back, back in the days, in the 90s, uh, the Soviet education was very highly um, demanded over in uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. Basically, they wanted our specialists. They wanted everybody, even me with my, you know, the small you know, three-year trade school and two years of university. They awarded me all kinds of uh, college credits and, I, you know, I was able to finish my, uh, uh, my education uh, because of that. Because our education was uh, very, very um, valuable. And now they try to, uh, you know, copy some uh, American system. No, they didn't. They no. couldn't even copy it right. Yeah. It's like that old saying, you know, you heard the, the bell, uh, the <laughs> ring, but you didn't know what the bell is. Uh, that whole the EGE exam thing, it doesn't work like that in the United States. Uh, you still have to finish 12 years of school and uh, you get grades for all your, for all your uh, subjects you took. Uh, there, also, uh, there's also, uh, there are also different levels of a high school education you can get because you can just go as a general, just take whatever everybody's taking, or you can go more in detail, more specialized and much harder. So you get awarded college credits right away while you're still in school, you can already get a college credit. Credit is uh, uh, basically like points towards your, towards your degree. And that those classes are much harder. They, they pretty much are the college level courses. You can start taking them in high school. And uh, you have, like in California, there are two exams for the college entry uh, you can take. But those not ex they are not exams uh, which pretty much just guarantee you anything. Mm -hmm. It pretty much just gives you how many points you score and some colleges take you know, that score, some colleges, I mean, it's just, it's, it's like a scale. You have to score this much and then they take all your grades, summarize it, they get your characteristic, like characteristica. How was you in school? Or what did you do? What you didn't you do? I mean, you're a troublemaker or and uh, didn't did you participate in some kind of other you know cool activities like I don't know singing dancing. and that is apart from our uh, correct yege. it's it's another yeah, thing yeah yeah is you don't even need to take yege to apply for college and you can actually get on it and it's not yege it's different two different tests because there are two major uh, university chains they kind of like um, they're not friends basically yeah, there is UC and there's SU the University of California and also California State University, there are two systems. Uh, and there are two different tests you can take. Uh, you can take both or take one or don't take any. And you can still get to college. But basically your knowledge is not graded by that one test. Because that's nonsense. Because now they teach kids to take the test. They don't teach them anything else. That's, they don't you know, teach uh, them to think uh, properly by themselves. Uh, well, you have to teach to how analyze, to learn. To, to analyze, to produce some something. Well, like we did it in writing, sochinini, yeah. Well, Correct. Essay. Yeah. Essay. The English composition I took in, uh, in, in the university, that's like one of the hardest classes I've taken in my life. And I was always excellent in Russian composition. I always get A's. I usually get, you know, how I used to get two points, like uh, A and A or A and B. I usually had like A and C. 
A for the you know the subject and C for grammar or B for grammar because I oh, I could never figure out the commas. I put either too many or not enough, but in English it's easier actually with commas, they don't have that many. So uh, and English composition was like, like one of the hardest classes ever. And I, I actually took so much time studying it, reading it, trying to understand you know certain ways. Uh, how to do it properly, but I mean, I got, I graduated, so I passed all that stuff. And actually, I used to, used to write reports at work, and my reports were like better than Americans because they went to school in the U.S. and they also they didn't teach them well, you know, literature or uh, you know, writing well enough. So lots of my colleagues had a real hard time writing the report. Basically, one page report where you you know you write certain standard things like they just standard, and then you have to describe the scene and write down what happened. And they couldn't even put like three, you know, sentences together. That's 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 different. Mm. And uh, now it, it's good because you are talking about uh, well, uh, good stuff and bad stuff in Russia. Because of well, the previous interview with some girl, uh, she was so amazed, she was dazed and confused, and mm. some. Some wrote comments like, oh, it's kind of propaganda. Now we don't have any propaganda. We have, uh, well, a picture of uh, modern life in Russia with some pluses and minuses. And um, I think for you, uh, some people can um, look at the situation from others, from uh, other perspectives. Other perspectives, yeah. Okay. Um, what what you do here in Russia? What are you going to do? Well, what are your plans? Uh, well, as you know, <laughs> I have my own YouTube channel. It's called Granny Zakata, uh, where I t you know tell the stories, tell about the you know U.S., about California, about my police work, about criminalistics, about uh, the movies and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. People, exactly. I'm going to leave the link. <laughs> yes. Thank there. You, you oh. better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. I mean, lots of people like it. I have about uh, just less than uh, 60,000 subscribers. And mm -hmm. thank you guys for watching and for asking questions. I, I have several um, videos where I just straight up just ans uh, answer questions mm -hmm. uh, about stuff. Uh, right now I'm writing a book. Oh. Yes, I'm about halfway through. Because writing. you was good at compositions. <laughs> no, because I was told to, you have to write that book. I says, yes. I said yes, and uh, uh, what else I'm doing? I'm trying to like just stay healthy, uh, try to play a little sports, play a little hockey, mm -hmm. um, which I used to play pretty much a lot. I'm not good, I just I just like it. It's one of those things, uh, you cannot be good at many things in life. I mean, you can, but some things are better than others. Uh, I just like hockey a lot. That's why I played on the rollerblades in California, because where I lived, the, the, there was no ice. There were no ice arenas around me, so we had to play in the park in little rollerblades. It was, it's still fun, uh, but now I mostly play on ice. Well, not mostly, but I play on ice. It's very different again. So I have to learn again how to sk ice skate versus rollerblade. Uh, I play on the computer a lot. I like my computer games. I also have a you know gaming channel, uh, GRZ Gaming. It's kind of small right now, but I'm going to start develop developing it pretty soon. And uh, I go around visit my. Uh, Fans. Uh, as a matter of fact, this Friday uh, we're having a meet. Like in St. Petersburg for uh, Downtown St. Petersburg, yeah, yeah. right? Boravaya 6, yeah. in a little club. Uh, we have a little room, just talk, drink some beer, yeah. tell them some funny and sad stories, answer their questions. And it's always a pleasure. I really like uh, to, to meet my, uh, my viewers, my fans. It's crazy how many, many people are interested in this whole America police stuff and I just visited actually the special festival. Oh, because we don't have any policemen from <laughs> America right now here, especially who speaks Russian language, dear. Okay, yeah, you are kind of a star, like I said okay. uh, at the beginning. Right. Now, you, now you're calling me names, right? <laughs> so. Come on. Well, so. okay, Max. Uh, well, thank you for coming. Always well, uh, yeah, you guys uh, can leave your comments. Uh, they're uh, all uh, stuff like, you know, link on the channel of the channel of Mike. Uh, and if you have some proposition, if you have some interesting guests, uh, well, as you can see, not only girls or women, yeah, but who, you know, can fit to our concept. Write to me. I'm going to leave my email and uh, my site 
right there. So I'm up to you, to your you know Some messages, dishes. messages to your letters and so on. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Have a nice day. For those of you who like to discover new things and offline, I like to say that you can join my walking tours in St. Petersburg and Moscow. Well, in Russian actually, but I can do it in English if you like. All the information you can find below this video. Also, you can go with me to Paris and Berlin. I'm guiding there too. Just send me an email and I'll write you back.